I think I've told you the story, Travis, but I started in construction in like 1988, I think. And uh, me and a buddy of mine had just got out of high school, didn't know what we were going to do. His father happened to be a uh, project superintendent for a large commercial contractor. And at the time, they were building uh, Volvo heavy trucks out here off of 40 and said, you know, y'all come start sweeping floors, whatever you need to do. And back then you just kind of showed up on a construction site, you signed your name on the dotted line, and then, you know, if you worked a week, you got a week's worth of uh, a pay. And never looked back, just stuck with it, stayed in commercial construction, um, mostly did healthcare construction, we mostly mostly built hospitals. So, um, and, and shoot, the last, uh, probably in 19, 92, 93, somewhere in there, I uh, was promoted to like an assistant superintendent, worked my way up to superintendent, and ran large commercial construction jobs from 100,000 up to 200 million. Um, again, mostly in healthcare, and then about three years ago, I, it was just a good breaking point. Kids were out of school, uh, always wanted to do something for myself, started just trimming houses and doing commercial type work that I was used to doing um, and then one day decided to start messing with skateboards and now here I am making skateboards <laughs> it's really crazy really really crazy so uh, uh, a couple three years ago when I started recycling skateboards somebody requested them from they requested a park bench and uh, but they wanted colorful wood in it and I didn't know where that colorful wood was going to come from. I guess I could dye it. They didn't want it painted. Um, I started looking into dyeing wood and, and trying to find, but they were wanting, you know, true color, not when you dye wood, it, you, you don't get the vibrant colors that you see in the, in the skateboard because it's a different process of dyeing that's, that's done in a, in a controlled environment, I guess. So um, I looked around and saw that I had a few old skateboards in the corner of the shop over there and I did a search on recycling skateboards and I found George from Iris uh, who's out in California and he's been recycling skateboards a lot longer than I have and he made probably the very first skateboard out of recycled skateboards and does some amazing work so with some inspiration from him and some help from him um, I started you know making my own kind of recycled wood and making projects out of it. I made that bench for him and but when I got to making the veneers um, and when the process of learning got to the point where I could cut these thin uh, veneers like this and stack them together and actually use them for veneers of a skateboard that's when it kind of changed for me because we had already started dabbling in making skateboards and pressing our own skateboards just out of regular veneers but when I could personalize them with them a little bit and do something different um, that everybody else was doing that's when it really connected with me there isn't there's a few guys out there a few folks out there that have used that, that do the same thing they, they get their their veneers in different ways uh, but all this but at, in, at the end of the day um, there's only a, there's only a handful of folks out there that are that that I guess waste enough time <laughs> to make recycled skateboard veneers and uh, and press them into a skateboard. But um, I don't know that I'll ever turn back. It, it's it's uh, I'm definitely hooked now, full show. These are some of the things. So and then in the midst, I guess of of what we've been doing is um, taking these are actually noses and tails from just this just the skateboard noses and tails that I pressed together into a big chunk of wood cut that cut that up into these smaller chunks of wood and these are getting to be uh, these are ready to be a uh, uh, some bar uh, beer taps handles tap handles for a local brewery um, do a lot of that stuff we've built furniture out of the skateboard we've built everything from tchotchke picture frames um, to benches to um, just crazy amount of stuff uh, the, one of the biggest questions that I get is where do you get your skateboard um, to recycle and um, the truth is I get them anywhere I can. Uh, 
I, I started with uh, local skate shops. I emailed, called, stopped by, uh, have any old decks, and every one of them did. You know, some of them had split decks, some of them had de decks that just they were still whole decks, but they can't they can't be skated anymore because they're cracked or chipped or, or or too bad to skate. So um, I was very fortunate, and I, that first time I went out and I asked, I, I got a handful of decks and enough to to do some real something with. And after that, man, I, I, I started branching out, going to other skate shops and uh, more skate shops. And now I've, I've, I've made friends at skate shops from Charlotte um, all the way to Raleigh and Durham. And um, between all those skate shops, I, they've, I mean, they've kept me in skateboards and I've, I've just I've flourished because of them. I can't do it without them old skateboards. So um, I, I can't say thank you enough to... To, the, the, to those who have helped me along the way and, and everybody that's ever given me a skateboard has given me a skateboard has helped me along the way for sure so um, I will continue to get skateboards as long as I can from folks like that and from the, from the local skate shops um, and, and continue working with those folks out there in all those skate shops a bunch of good I, can, I just can't say enough about the, the friends and the, the folks that I've met um, these past few years collecting skateboards but um, when I started making skateboards so a typical skateboard is um, is seven plies and so here's your seven plies and they don't have to be colored these are these are just colored some of a few of these are colored so you got a, a regular straight grain uh, maple veneer uh, then you got another regular straight grain maple veneer and you can see the grain run in that direction and then on the third one in you have uh, a cross grain what we call veneer and the, the grain actually runs this way in it um, it's an industry standard and that's what um, that's what makes the best skateboard so you have a cross grain then the center veneer of your seven is another straight grain then if we started from the other side back in this would be your third from this end is back to a cross grain you can see the grain running crossways right there straight straight so there's your seven layers right there then those seven layers get um, literally put on this table right here and um, and this is where we glue up our, our veneers. Uh, right now we still hand roll all the glue on the veneer and it puts the exact amount of glue that we want. Um, not too much, not too little. Um, th there's, there's definitely a recipe for it and, uh, and what works best. So that that's, was a learning curve, but either way. So all those veneers are glued every side. So it's glue to glue every time. And once they're all glued up and all that glue is smooshing out of them, we take those veneers and what we do here is we take these what we call these preforms and this is just plastic and that plastic kind of helps hold the veneers in place while they're under all that pressure and uh, we can stack as many as four skateboards on top of one another in here uh, we typically do three but um, the press is powerful enough to do four and then that stack of skateboards is stuck in that press like that so normally that's just a dry that's we just press that dry but uh, normally there'd be some glue squishing out of there and that would set in that press for two hours and then after that two hours is, is over we release the pressure on the press and out pops that skateboard right there so after they come out of the press, um, we bring them over here to cure. Uh, normally it takes about, uh, in the winter time, it takes a little, a little less time, maybe three to five days in the winter time. In the humidity in the summer, um, it can be as much as uh, two weeks before they cure and we check them cure-wise for moisture. So, um, you can, and there's a bunch of different kind of moisture meters. This just happens to be a, a scan one. But you can see uh, five, and it'll get a little bit more. So this one's actually pretty much ready. Anything less than 10 is good and ready to cut. I don't know if it'll have anything that'll get. Yeah, see that one's even ready to cut. So after we bring it into cure, we bring it over. Uh, we bring it back over here to the shop and template it, whether it's a 825 or an 850, and mark it out, cut it on the bandsaw and cut up close to the line as we can and then it goes to the uh, stationary belt sander so the edge sander so that we can sand the edges down to the line to size 
and then after that we bring it over here to the vacuum clamp and route the edges, round over the edges. So after a bunch of sanding, uh, either with the balloon sander, there's still a little bit of hand sanding that goes on a skateboard before it's finished, but uh, after all of that sanding, um, the, one of the final steps is, or the final hard step is to uh, shoot a clear coat on it. So we'll, what we, and what we do is we gang up, you know, we try to do as many as we can in one time. So, cause when I fill up this, when I fill up this with my material, it's hard to do just one skateboard. So we try to do at least five, 10, whatever. Um, lay them all out uh, across, the, across the table and um, and then go ahead and spray them. And that's about the end and it, this, this product that we use, it uh, doesn't take very long to dry, so we uh, we hand it, we sand it one more time with like a 400 grit, man, and it just kind of polishes it up and and, and scrubs out any little um, uh, droplets that didn't quite lay flat from the from the sprayer, and then that board uh, sits maybe just for 12, 14 hours, and it's ready to bag up and, and ship, and um, we've had some really good results with the products we're using now as far as the the, the spray. And uh, we're real happy with how they're turning out. So we can hope to continue to keep doing what we're doing because uh, we're turning out some decent boards here lately.